is that we can prevent heart disease with simvastatin and enduracin in America for less than $90 a year if we find the subclinical atherosclerosis early with CAC and CIMT. Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Edwards. I'm a board certified lipidologist. I know that this may not make sense initially, but I will show you with five easy steps what this all means. This photograph is important to understand before we get started. It is a cross section of an artery. It is from the New England Journal of Medicine 1987. It is from an article by Seymour Glavgov. What it shows is that when you initially have plaque buildup in the artery, it does not encroach on the lumen. What happens is that there is remodeling and the artery gets larger first before cutting in on the flow of blood in the lumen. This is a startling revelation. This explains why people can have a nuclear stress test one week and be told that it is completely normal and then the next day they can die from a ruptured plaque. This also explains the same phenomenon with an angiogram. The angiogram will show no blockage. However, the next day, because of inflammation of the plaque and rupture in the wall of the plaque, the patient dies suddenly. Factor. This is very simple. Go to your lab work, get the total cholesterol, subtract the HDL. That's your tubby factor. You already have it in your report but usually a physician has not told you what your tubby factor is. If you want to regress plaque in your body, you want to get your tubby factor less than 80. Step 2. Get a CAT scan of your heart. It is about the same amount of radiation as a mammogram, so if you get it once and first, there is very little risk from radiation. It is called a coronary artery calcium or CAC. This tells you your calcium score. If you have a calcium score or of one or greater, then you have plaque in your coronary arteries. Step three, get an ultrasound of your neck specifically get a CIMT or what is called a carotid intimal thickness. This is not the usual duplex or triplex ultrasound. This is an ultrasound of the wall of the carotid. Get both a CAC and a CIMT because if the CAC is zero you can still have a positive CIMT. This shows that indeed you do have atherosclerosis or athroma in the wall of your carotid. If you have plaque found on the CAC or the CIMT then you want to get regression of that plaque with combination therapy. There are two inexpensive and very safe drugs. Simvastatin is generic Zocor. 90 pills can be purchased for $10. Endurosin is an over-the-counter niacin product. 1,000 pills can be purchased for $90 on the internet. You take one endurosin twice a day with meals. You take one Simvastatin at bedtime. The fifth and final step, once you get your tubby factor less than 80 with combination medicines, then after two years of having the tubby factor less than 80, repeat the CIMT of the neck. This does not pose any further radiation risk as it is ultrasound. If there is progression of atheroma in the wall, then something is not entirely right and it may be 
because the tubby factor has discordance with the LDL particle number or the APOB. Thus you need to get these blood tests and see if there is discordance with the tubby factor. If there is, then you must use either the LDLP or the APOB as the goal of therapy. To get regression of plaque, you want to get the LDLP less than 750 or the APOB less than 60. I wrote the Tubby Theory from Topeka in order to educate people that we presently have the ability to prevent most sudden coronary death, most heart attacks, and most strokes inexpensively and safely. This illustration shows why the present paradigm is not sufficient. A patient will not have symptoms until he has 50 percent pardon me 75 percent or more blockage of the lumen of the artery. Thus here there begins to be loss of lumen of the artery. However the patient may not have symptoms meaning chest pain or shortness of breath until he gets up to 75 percent or more. Now the reason the nuclear stress test and the angiogram are insufficient for picking up early disease is illustrated in this photo. Here we have a normal artery. Here a little bit of plaque starts to form. And here we have a lot of plaque there's remodeling of the artery which means the artery gets bigger to compensate for the plaque not the lumen but the wall the whole artery gets bigger but the lumen stays the same this is very important to understand why we have to change the paradigm presently we can find this plaque early with two tests, the calcium score and the CIMT. If we find any amount of plaque, that plaque is vulnerable to inflammation and may rupture. If it ruptures in the coronary artery, it could cause sudden death. If it ruptures in the carotid, it can cause stroke. This is why I feel there needs to be a new paradigm we need to start screening people with one risk factor with a CIMT and a CAC and then we need to treat them more aggressively we need to get their tubby factor less than 80 and we need to use two drugs because niacin with a statin does a great job at taking the plaque out of the wall of the artery and then we can demonstrate this with follow-up CIMTs. Thus you see that we presently have the science. The medication costs approximately $100 a year for the two different types of medicines. And the testing itself is safe and inexpensive. The CIMT in Topeka is $100. The calcium score presently in Kansas City is $50. Thus, for $150, you can find out if you have disease. And then for $100 a year, you can prevent that disease from progressing. And if it doesn't progress, then you will probably not have stroke, heart attack, or sudden death.